On April 19, 2012, stem cell biologist Tylo Kunoth delivered a lecture on Parkinson's disease at a conference in Edinburgh. When he finished, a woman at the back of the room stood up and raised her hand. Her name was Joy Milne, and she had a question, an unusual one. In fact, it was so unexpected that, at first, Professor Kunath didn't quite understand it. Joy, a nurse by profession, wanted to know if any research had been done on why people with Parkinson's smelled different. A loss of sense of smell is a known symptom of Parkinson's, so Kunath initially assumed she was referring to that. But no, she meant that people with Parkinson's had a distinct odor. Joy's husband, Les, had Parkinson's, and she was convinced that the disease had changed his natural scent. According to Joy, who claimed to have an exceptionally keen sense of smell, her husband had always had a distinctive manly aroma. But after developing Parkinson's, that scent was replaced by something far less pleasant. Her question caught Kunath off guard. He wasn't sure how to respond, but he answered as best he could. As far as he knew, Parkinson's patients didn't smell any different from anyone else, and that was that. Except it wasn't. Joy's question stuck with Kunath. She hadn't come across as eccentric or unscientific. She was a medical professional. And more than that, she seemed absolutely convinced that Parkinson's had changed the way her husband smelled. So what if she was right? A few months later, Kunath sought a second opinion from analytical chemist Perdita Barron. At first, she was skeptical, but she didn't dismiss the idea outright. She knew that dogs had been trained to sniff out certain types of cancer. If a dog could detect cancer through scent, why couldn't a human detect Parkinson's? There was an obvious counterpoint. A dog's sense of smell is exponentially more powerful than a human's. The bloodhound, for instance, has a sense of smell 100 million times more sensitive than ours. But both Kunath and Baran were scientists. They knew that hypotheses shouldn't be dismissed without testing. So, if they wanted to see if Joy could really smell Parkinson's, they needed an experiment. With the help of Parkinson's UK, they tracked down Joy and invited her to Edinburgh University for a unique study. Twelve participants were involved. Six had Parkinson's, six did not. Each wore a clean white t-shirt for 24 hours, avoiding deodorants or perfumes to ensure their natural scent remained untouched. The t-shirts were cut in half, sealed in bags, and given to Joy. Her task? Simply sniff each sample and determine whether the wearer had Parkinson's. It was a double-blind study. Neither Joy nor the researchers knew the correct answers until afterward. When the results were revealed, they were astonishing. Joy correctly identified all six Parkinson's patients just by scent alone. She even managed to match each half t-shirt to its counterpart perfectly. However, there was one issue. She had incorrectly identified one control participant as having Parkinson's. Even with this single false positive, her accuracy rate was incredible. But could it have been a fluke? Kunath and Baran wanted to explore further. If Joy could detect Parkinson's, what exactly was she smelling? Initially, the researchers assumed the scent came from sweat. Check, check, check one, check two, check, check. But Joy disagreed. She said the strongest smell was around the neckline and upper back. This led the team to a new hypothesis. They weren't dealing with sweat, but sebum, the oily substance secreted by the skin. Barron wanted to investigate further, but funding proved elusive. Many dismissed the idea as pseudoscience. The project stalled until a remarkable coincidence reignited interest. Eight months later, Kunath was at another Parkinson's conference in Edinburgh when he ran into someone familiar, one of the control group participants from Joy's t-shirt test. But this man, Bill, wasn't supposed to have Parkinson's. So why was he at a Parkinson's conference? As it turned out, 
Bill had since been diagnosed with Parkinson's. Joy's supposed mistake wasn't a mistake at all. She had detected his Parkinson's before modern medicine could. The implications were enormous. If Joy's nose could detect Parkinson's before clinical symptoms appeared, this could revolutionize early diagnosis. Barron finally secured funding and analyzed sebum samples from thousands of patients. Using gas chromatography mass spectrometry, she identified three compounds, eicosane, hippuric acid, and octadecanal, that were consistently elevated in Parkinson's patients. Joy confirmed that these matched the scent profile. Now, a simple swab test based on Joy's discovery boasts 97% accuracy in lab trials. Plans are underway to introduce it to hospitals. But Joy's abilities don't stop there. She can also detect Alzheimer's, tuberculosis, cancer, and diabetes just by scent. Superheroes don't always wear capes. Some, like Joy Milne, simply have a nose that could change the world. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more incredible stories.